from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, listeners, and welcome to another Ropecast, our podcast for everyone who's interested in English and things connected with that. Normally, I would have Peter here in the studio with me, but um, I welcome today our backroom boy, Chris. And we'll have a little conversation today about President Trump's language. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. That should be interesting. Yeah. Well, I don't want to pass judgment on Trump as president. I'm not in a position to do that. But it's interesting to look at the way he uses English. And, of course, there have been some fairly serious criticisms of his use of English. I picked up um, a newspaper article some time ago which said, as a headline, Trump speaks at level of eight-year-old, new analysis finds. Well, that's a slightly slanted interpretation of some research. So I think what I want to do is to take a much closer look. Mm -hmm. How does Trump use English? And is it different from other presidents of the United States? I would assume so. (laughs) Yes. Well, coming back to this newspaper article, that's based on research, which was pretty thorough, looking at the president's first 30,000 words uttered in office and compared with previous presidents of the United States. And it is true, then, if you do this, that um, President Trump's vocabulary seems very limited, and also the way he constructs utterances is very much simpler than most other presidents. So there is some substance to this. Mm -hmm. And and limited, do you have numbers for that? Well, I, I don't want to go into the detail of this particular research, because what I want to do is to take a slightly different approach, and that is to compare President Obama's last State of the Union address with President Trump's first. Right. Now, <laughs> of course, we have to be cautious here because these are addresses which undoubtedly are prepared in writing by speech writers, and so they don't truly represent the way these people would speak or write casually in English. Plus, Obama's had a lot more practice than with the eight. Well, okay, <laughs> yes, but <laughs> I think uh, Trump has had pr- plenty of practice at communicating since he was on television for many years and uh, True enough. <laughs> became known as a communicator there. Just kidding. <laughs> yes. I think if you start with uh, how do they approach their public, President Obama does use some fairly colloquial language to show, hey, I'm one of you. Mm-hmm. Um, so the last address begins with something like, I know some of you are antsy to get back to Iowa. Well, this is a very colloquial way of starting the address. And he uses phrases like to go easy on something. He uses kids rather than children. But if you study more closely, you find that um, Obama's use of English is a lot more varied than that of President Trump. It shows in various ways in vocabulary, but also in the way the things are structured. We take vocabulary just as an example. President Trump's most frequently used word, leaving aside the things like uh and the and all these things, you know, which would be really rather tedious. If you take the middle range in terms of English frequency, then Trump's most frequent word in his address is tonight. Oh. (laughs) So what does that tell you? Oh, well, he's a very limited event horizon. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, let's say there's a focus on the here and now. And there are many other examples of this in his first State of the Union address. So, for example, in several places, he invites somebody in the audience to stand up Mm -hmm. and he says why this person is there and what wonderful thing they may have done and they deserve applause and the audience applauds or they deserve sympathy and they get this... Probably uh, not the journalists, I I assume. Probably not, no. So, you see, there's this this focus on the here and now with, um, with President Trump, whereas you look at uh, the way President Obama address, addresses the nation. He really does address the nation, not just the people in front of him. And he uses um, the most frequent word of that middle set with President Obama is the economy, mm-hmm. which President Trump hardly uses at all. But which he always stresses, he is the best for. Okay. <laughs> so Obama's favorite words, if you like, in his speech, in his address to the nation, economy, leadership, politics, democracy, and quite a number of other relatively abstract terms. For example, opportunity, he uses progress, he uses spirit. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the the list for um, President Trump in his first address, 
He has, for example, veterans, workers, terrorists. What he also has, there are three items that President Obama doesn't use at all. Terrible, horrible, and tremendous. Hmm. Quite mm. emotional. Yeah, these are <clears throat> words that appeal directly to the emotions, aren't they? They are, they are subjective words, and I think this too is indicative. And negatively tinged as well. Perhaps, yeah, although tremendous, not necessarily. I think it's used positively as well mm. as negatively. Because right? some people have tremendous success. Right, exactly, yeah. yes. So that's pretty clear. I think where, um, where you can see possibly President Trump's own hand in his first address is in some of the little phrases, sometimes an odd word, that he adds at the end of a section. Improvising so, on what was written. Possibly. I mean, there's no way we can establish that 100%. But he, he invites somebody to stand up to receive applause, and then he, he says, I think they like you, Steve. Hmm. Well, it may well have been spontaneous. Or he says, when he mentions a new jobs, tremendous number. Or he says, thank heavens. Mm -hmm. Or he says, good feeling. So there are oh, lots well. of these little <laughs> phrases that come in there. And I thought, this reminds me of something else. This reminds me of tweeting, mm -hmm. which is where possibly we find out more about the real Trump and how he naturally uses English. That would be an interesting topic to look yeah. into. Good feeling is like in some verbs and uh, many other standard language features. Yeah which clearly show the parallel to the reduced expression you find on the internet. And yeah, and especially and tweet. in tweets. I mean, yeah. tr Trump's tweets, I think, almost always end with an exclamation mark. Mm -hmm. you know, it's almost, it seems obligatory when he tweets. So this is a little, a comment, a suggestion, and such like. Yeah, and it, it's louder, after all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I mean, that, as I said, we need to be a little bit careful here, because this is not just um, the, the two presidents, this is also speech writers involved. But perhaps it would be worth going on to, to, to look at tweets more carefully. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, but I think that's all for today. Goodbye, folks. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Robecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.